an eruption 2,800 times bigger than the disaster at Mount St. Helens in the state of Washington in the U.S. when the mountain unexpectedly blew its top off and created a massive, massive explosion. Everyone is scared still when they hear the name Mount St. Helens. And you're telling me that a volcano produces something that is too 1,800 times bigger, guys. It sounds really scary, and it is, and it is reality. So imagine a blast so intense that it has blanketed half the planet in ash, has plummeted the Earth into years of volcanic winter, years, and it nearby erased humanity. We're not talking about Yellowstone, I can tell you that. We're not talking about Campi Flegre in Naples and Italy, although we're talking about that one a lot because it seems to be creeping towards a dangerous eruption. So guys, if you love Italy and Europe, you should watch the video that I'm posting in the end screen because scary, there could be something happening very soon. But let's get back to two. 1,800 times bigger. That's exactly what happened 74,000 years ago. This volcanic eruption almost erased all of mankind. There's a massive super volcano that is located beneath the present day Lake Toba in northern Sumatra in Indonesia. Indonesia, we know, has lots of volcanoes, right? An earthquake. But this thing has exploded in one of the largest and most violent volcanic eruptions in Earth's history. That's a stunner, I would say. And this explosion slash volcanic eruption has ejected roughly 700 cubic miles cubic miles. That's 2,800 square kilometers of rock, ash, and gas into the atmosphere. Blocked out the sunlight. Nothing was growing anymore. Fields were covered with ashes. Nothing. Everything was suffocated. No sunlight. It cools down pretty quickly. So, and that has spread widely across the globe. Absolutely devastating. So 2,800 times the material that was ejected in the 1980 Mount St. Helens eruption. The, the sky, you can imagine, it has darkened across continents. Global temperature plummeted for years. What do you eat? We're talking 74,000 years ago, no greenhouses or underground bunkers. There's genetic evidence that suggests that the human population may have fallen to only a few thousand survivors. So guys, I mean, we're getting ourselves close to extinction level quite often when we're playing the nuclear disaster thing. We're getting close to that sometimes, right? And that would wipe us out. But, you know, we're worrying about it getting too hot. I think we should worry about freezing because we're not prepared for that. We do not have enough greenhouses and sufficient energy creation to support that because solar panels around your greenhouse will not help you if the sun's not shining. So this will happen again. We do have super volcanoes. We do have sleeping ones. We do have active ones, right? It's just a matter of time. Toba, of course, sits on one of the most tectonically active regions on Earth. And just to the west, the Great Sumatran Fault cuts a scar across the landscape. Mm. So earthquakes, where we have a lot of fault zones, subduction zones, we do have volcanoes, that is clear. If we look at the Pacific Ring of Fire, this horseshoe part around the Pacific Plate, lots of subduction zones, the West Coast, lots of one volcano after another. We have this on Alaska and Japan. So of course, 
most of the Earth's large earthquakes happen along these subduction zones, and there we have the volcanoes. But the Great Sumatran Fault is a visible line in the, in the landscape. Basically, where we have blocks of the Earth's crust grinding past each other. And then offshore, we do have the Australian plate that is diving beneath the Sunda plate subduction zone. And that is capable. This subduction zone is quite a monstrosity, guys. It's capable of generating colossal earthquakes and tsunamis. So the earthquakes, the volcanoes, and the tsunamis, they're connected. And we have seen in the July magnitude 8.8 .8 megathrust earthquake in Kamchatka that that shaking has triggered six, maybe seven, volcanoes. We do not have 100% scientific evidence, but it's quite obvious that shortly after the quake, some right away, these volcanoes erupted. So earthquakes can trigger volcanoes, but earthquakes can trigger the tsunamis. And it has triggered a tsunami, right? So dangerous, dangerous stuff that we're dealing with there on these subduction zones. But that eruption, guys, massive. If we look at Lake Toba today, looks beautiful, looks tranquil. I recently reported about Crater Lake in Oregon. These lakes, there's something else. And the same with Santorini, the island. That's a crater, guys. Your beautiful hotels, Instagram Island, you're sitting on a collapsed volcanic monster. Lake Toba, blue waters, beautiful, lush green mountains surrounded, absolutely beauty of nature. And then we have an island rising from its center, like in Crater Lake, for example, like in Santorini. There we also have a small island. This island here in Lake Toba is called Zamosia. So basically that's rising from the center of Lake Toba. And beneath that calm beauty, guys, is an active, active volcanic giant. So it's not like 75,000 years ago, it's like poof. And then it's like, that was it. Active. And basically, guys, the, some of the most beautiful landscapes on Earth, they hide the remnants or the scars of these unimaginable, powerful forces of nature. Let's get back to when I said Lake Toba is an active volcano. So kind of what the scientists are telling us, it's active but dormant. Uh, interesting. Okay. So it is considered an active volcano, but they say it's currently dormant. And the last known major eruption was the one that we just talked about. But it is a supervolcano. It is a supervolcano. And the scientists right now, they're saying smaller eruptions are possible. Another super eruption is not expected for hundreds of thousands of years. So we might be safe from that one for a while. In Earth years, not a long time. In our years, of course. So that eruption that happened 74,000 years ago was called the Toba, the Young Toba Tuff. And that has led to the formation of Lake Toba today. So at the moment, the volcano is not actively erupting but it's seismically active. We see earthquakes there. So smaller eruptions are possible in the future, definitely for sure. What they think about the magma accumulation underneath Lake Toba, they think that they know how much is there and based on these calculations, they think it might take another 600,000 years for a supervolcanic eruption.
the Lake Toba Caldera, as we see it today, was formed by a series of eruptions, with the last super eruption being the largest explosive eruption. And seismically active means, in this case, not just micro seismic stuff, it has experienced major earthquakes. So that makes it dangerous. Major earthquakes in 1892, for example, in 1916 and in 1987. But probably these are related to tectonic activity in the region rather than the volcano itself. But the tectonic activity maybe could trigger the volcano. Toba is one of 20 supervolcanoes on Earth. Of course, we know the most famous one is Yellowstone. So if you are a visitor and you come to the Lake Toba, the crater is mostly filled with water, right? It's a big lake. So the volcano's caldera, a caldera is basically a large cauldron like hollow that forms shortly after the emptying of a magma chamber in a volcanic eruption. Because there's hollow space. And then the pressure from the top and it collapses and this lake this caldera is home to the largest volcanic lake on earth it it measures about 100 kilometers long 130 kilometers wide and up to 505 meters deep and that super volcanic eruption was even bigger by the last Yellowstone eruption 2.2 million years ago. They say that Toba ejected 12% more stuff than Yellowstone. So 2,800 times more than Mount St. Helens and 12% more than Yellowstone. So that's impressive, I have to say. If you liked it, guys, maybe you wanna buy me a coffee, link is in the description. Click the like, the hype button and subscribe because I want you to see what's in the end screen and I want you to see all the other videos as well because I report on a daily basis about everything that's going on with Earth. I'm on the pulse for you guys. I hope you liked it and I see you in the next one, hopefully in a second if you click here. Stay safe and stay prepared, guys. I want to see you again. Bye-bye.